So, you decided to take up kayaking. You've watched a lot of videos, taken a bit of advice, and you think you're ready to get going. Well, before you do anything else, make sure you watch this video about the top five things that you need to avoid when you start kayaking. Hi there, I'm Joe, I'm the Adventuring Irishman, here giving you some advice. As you may know, this channel is 100% non-sponsored, so we rely on your support. So do make sure that you smash that subscribe button to keep up to date with other videos we've got planned. Make sure you hit that like button, and if you're really interested in supporting the work that we do, make sure you check out our Patreon. So, without further ado, let's check out five things that you need to avoid when you start getting into kayaking. Number one, all the gear, no idea. In all my years coaching and leading, um, I have seen people turn up to the beach and, uh, of course, to the riverside with kit that they've only just bought. Some of it's not fitted out properly, their boats, for instance, or they haven't even tried on their buoyancy and adjusted it, or their helmet has never even been out of the package until that morning. And the biggest problem is, once they get it on, it either doesn't fit, it's not right for the job, or it just makes it really difficult. This is especially true with kayaks. I always say, try before you buy. But often, internet deals just seem like too good to miss. You'll buy a boat and it's not quite right for you and you only discover that after you've put a few scratches in it. But by then, it's already dropped a few hundred pounds of value, which is not good. So my best advice, don't be the guy with all the gear and not knowing how to use it. Join a club, find a coach. They've got the gear that you can try. Better still, contact a shop. Don't just order online go to an actual kayaking shop walk in speak to the guys there kayaking is such a small community so retailers are not going to try and rip you off specifically because they want your custom and they want you to recommend them to other people because it's such a small network and most of those shops already know each other anyway so at the end of the day if you walk into a kayak shop and you say you're looking for a, a boat that fits you they're going to find you a choice of boats that fit you most shops will give you the opportunity to try it out on the water and see how you feel in it Seems true when it comes to buoyancy, it seems true when it comes to helmets, you can try them on in the shop, they'll tell you expertly how to fit them properly and what suits the type of paddling you're doing. So top tip number one, make sure you get the right kit for you, make sure you try before you buy. Number two is pretty ironic, don't take advice from the internet. Ironic because you're watching a video of me telling you what not to do. What I'm talking about is the infinite number of Facebook groups or forums or whatever it may be on the internet that give advice, don't take that advice. Seek out a coach, uh, an instructor, seek out a club and find out what's best for you. Um, often you'll find the advice you'll hear on the internet is subjective, it's from that person's point of view. And it's not exactly very objective for your own considerations, especially as a beginner. So find somebody who's got some expertise in real life, IRL, and go paddling with them. So tip number two, be careful what advice you absorb from the internet. Seek an expert. Tip number three, going too big, too fast. It's great when you start learning and you start to get the basics under your belt uh, and then you start to open your eyes up to all that's available out there. And it's very easy to step into an environment, a river or a sea state that you can't handle and suddenly you've you're terrified, you're put off, and you don't really wanna do it anymore. Or it'll completely slow your progress because you'll see everything as a scary challenge. So, my best advice is to find yourself a course that's at your level. There are loads of introduction to white water, introduction to sea kayaking, introduction to moderate water environments, introduction to surfing, whatever it may be. And you'll be guaranteed that the coach leading that course will tailor it to meet your needs. So you won't feel out of your depth, but you'll just feel out of your comfort zone enough that you'll learn without feeling panicked. And that's the best thing when you're learning kayaking. You wanna be just outside your comfort zone, but not too far that it's panic. Another way to do that is to join a club, and you'll often find within the club environment, there'll be levels of paddling. So there'll be a beginner's paddle, there'll be an intermediate's paddle, there'll be an improver's paddle and all sorts. So you can get yourself into those environments slowly and when you feel you're ready, or maybe even when the leader of that paddle, the coach feels that you're ready. That's another great way of testing your skills. So number three, don't go too big before you're ready. Take your time, don't try and rush, 
you've got a long time to become good at it. Rome wasn't built in a day. Number four, completely opposite, stagnating. I've seen a lot of beginners get into the sport and either they've gone too big, too fast and terrified themselves or they're very, very, very cautious because of their own fears and worries or uh, real life, which kicks in. And often what that means is they'll paddle for a bit and then the weather gets cold and they stop paddling so much and their skill development just stops. Don't stop paddling. So even if a paddle seems below your ability, it's paddling. Get out in the water, because there's nothing better than having time on the water to develop your skills. Even as an experienced paddler, I still jump on to beginner sessions and intermediate sessions just to get a paddle out. So no matter what's happening out there, have a go at it. Um, the other thing is, you get really good in one craft. For instance, if you're chosen craft to sea kayaking and you've got pretty good in that sort of low grade environment, push yourself into something a little bit trickier but with some support. Or try a different craft. Suddenly try river paddling just to see what that's about. Get in a canoe, have a go at that. Try lots of different elements or aspects of kayaking. It can help you to elevate those skills and each of those uh, different areas can add in to your favorite area. For instance, if you're into downriver whitewater paddling, try freestyle. So you might find that some of the skills like a flat spin or even just the rolling aspect will really help in your downriver paddling. If you really enjoy sea kayaking, get a surf ski. See how you feel in that one. Why not suddenly go to the surf and have a play in the surf? All of these different areas will give you more experience and will ultimately help in your own development. So tip number four, don't stagnate. So we're down to tip number five. And this is the most controversial tip I'm going to give you. Listen carefully because the comments section below is about to light up with people disagreeing. There is no such thing as the good old days. What on earth do you mean, Joe? Well, there is a plethora of used gear bouncing about on Gumtree, eBay, Craigslist, Facebook. And it's very tempting because it always looks like a bargain. And there's no denying there are some amazing bargains out there available in boats and kit. But there's also some absolute trash that will only serve to damage your paddling experience. So let's look at an example. I had a guy turn up to do some whitewater paddling. Turned up with a helmet he bought on Gumtree. Thought it was brilliant, perfect bargain, only cost him a tenner. Brilliant little thing. This thing looked like it was from the 1940s. I had one look at it tugged the sides and the thing came apart in my hands. He looked at me and said, it is not very good. You're not getting your 10 pounds back. But worse still, that could have been his head inside that helmet. Boats are all fine and dandy. If you want to buy a second-hand boat, that's on you. But if you buy a helmet or a buoyancy aid second-hand online, you're really running a risk that it may not work for you. If you're gonna buy it almost new, you know, use one sort of helmets, give it a good inspection. Don't just buy blindly on the internet, go and have a good look at it. Seek advice. Personally, if I'm gonna put my life on a buoyancy aid or a helmet, I wanna know it's in good working order. I've seen people turn up in buoyancy aids that are falling to pieces and are definitely 30 to 40 years old. The flotation is definitely gone from it. Sun damage has damaged the material and you can literally, you know, scratch it once and the material falls off. And that's gonna be useless, you know, getting tossed around in the surf or through some rocks. There is nothing wrong with older gear if it's well serviced, but you never know if you buy it second hand if it's been serviced well or not. I wouldn't trust helmets and buoyancy, it's bought second hand. Boats, however, mm, I don't know. There's a good reason why boats evolve. Um, it's not like the iPhone where suddenly, you know, they're sick of people buying the iPhone 10, they're gonna bring out the iPhone 11 and, you know, hopefully precipitating more seals by launching the new greatest thing. Kayaking is not the same. You know, when a new boat is brought out, it's because there's been a development. Case in point, the Piranha Burn. The first Piranha Burn is very, very different in design and in comfort and in feel than the second burn. And the second burn is very, very different in paddle and feel than the third burn. So much so that Piranha re-brought out the, the Burn 2 as a B2 because people preferred the old hull design. Kayaks don't suddenly 
just come out because they are the new thing. They come out because a new development's been found and it's better. For instance, Piranha bringing out the Scorch, which of course isn't a replacement for the Burn, even though they called it the Scorch. Explain that one. Anyhow, um, so the Scorch, another type of boat, completely different dynamics to it, closer to the 9R and to the Ripper, suddenly a completely different type of boat. In fact, there are so many different designs in boats for different types of white water that they all paddle very differently. You could see something that's a deal on the internet, go and buy it, paddle it, and find it just doesn't suit you. And a case in point in that is the old 9R. The original 9R was a really cool boat, but it was chalk and cheese. It was a boat you had to work to paddle. You couldn't just jump in it and go, wow, this is great. Whereas some of the boats, for instance, the Jackson, Jackson Zen, you could jump into straight away and just, just paddle it. It was so easy to paddle in such a reliable boat. In fact, the Zen 3 is exactly the same. It's even more stable and fun to paddle, but it allows you so much margin for error. Whereas the 9R, the original, didn't allow you very much margin for error. But that's piranha boats, generally. They, they're they precision boats. You know, you might find the outfitting doesn't suit you, but suddenly you jump in a liquid logic and the plush outfitting is for you. But then again, you know, it's it's down to, to your personal taste. Best advice I can give is don't buy blind. Don't just see something on the internet and buy it because of the money. Don't buy it because it's a tenor. Pop into a kayaking shop, talk to the people there, try out the boats. If you can go to places where they've got demos beside a river, perfect. You know, there are tons of shops everywhere that will have demo fleets that will allow you to take out. They will have demo days in which you can go and play in those boats. They'll have trips that they run that will allow you to go out on and try lots of different boats in lots of different environments. This will give you the impression of the kind of boat you like and the kind of boat that pushes you. But that is not to say, don't buy an old boat. That is to say, be careful what you buy. Don't buy something just because it's cheap and it looks good. Buy something because it works for you. Do bear in mind, the older the boat, the more likely it is to have experienced some sort of UV damage, some sort of ding or bash or scratch, some holing, some failure along the line that just has caused that boat to not be great. And you don't know its history. I say this because there is such a demand for kayaks at the moment and um, with COVID still being something and of course all the effects of everything else going on globally, um, the production of kayaks has slowed and it's hard to get your hands on a new kayak, but they are out there. This means that older boats have increased in price because the demand is there. Just because the price has gone up, just because it's very interesting to some people doesn't mean it's perfect for you. I've seen people out on rivers paddling old dancers that they bought for 200 quid. I wouldn't even pay 50 quid for a dancer these days, personally. And it's a boat that, although might be fun in certain circumstances, yeah, and a great laugh, but for a beginner, it's not going to help your learning curve. If you're really keen to try a piece of kit and you're not sure whether you should buy it or not, don't just take the shot and hope for the best. Find a coach, find a club, try some boats. Try some stuff that works for you. Hmm. So there you have it. Five pitfalls you should avoid when you first start trying kayaking. Don't get me wrong, go ahead and try those pitfalls. But from my experience and the experience of people I've coached along the way, these are some of the things I've seen people fall into and they instantly regret it. So if you've liked this video and you find it really helpful, make sure you hit that like button. We've got some really cool videos coming up soon, like five different sea kayaks you might consider buying as a beginner, or even better, five different white water boats you might consider buying as a beginner. So to keep up to date with those, make sure you hit that subscribe button and even better, like and share. Enjoy. See you on the water.